Good morning, friends. He is risen. Well done. Some of you have been to church before. All right. <laughs> and for those of you who haven't been and don't know what we're doing, that's okay. There's all kinds of secret stuff you'll find out along the way. <laughs> it's good to have you with us this morning. Um, just talking with Terry about, so what's my intro song? What do you play as I come up? And he gave a story of back when he used to play for the Cleveland Indians. And Bill Clinton was coming to throw out the first pitch. And they were trying to think, what song should we play? What song? And the team got there and they said, he wants you to play Twist and Shout. So that's why you got a little taste of that as my theme music this morning as I came to the pulpit. Yeah. I believe everyone needs a soundtrack for their life, right? Hey, it is good to have you all with us today. And today, not only do we celebrate um, being together as a community, um, but we also get to celebrate a risen king. Um, I had a great conversation with my boys this morning. Uh, my youngest was saying that uh, we don't get a second chance with our body, he said. He said, actually, we do. That's the cool thing about today, is we get a second chance with our body because of the resurrection. So we're here to celebrate, is what we're here for. And we're going to begin today by looking into scripture and seeing what Mark has to tell us about this, this moment in history. Join us in Mark 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, who we learned a little about last week, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they could embalm him. Very early on Sunday morning, as the sun rose, they went to the tomb. They worried out loud to each other, who will roll back the stone from the tomb for us? Then they looked up, saw that it had been rolled back. It was a huge stone and walked right in. They saw a young man sitting on the right side dressed all in white, and they were completely taken aback, astonished. He said, like many times in scripture, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, the one they nailed on the cross. He's been raised up. He's no longer here. You can see for yourselves that the place is empty. Now, on your way, Tell his disciples and Peter that he's going on ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there exactly as he said. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, will you stand and join in singing?
Amen. Please be seated. Except for the kids, if you want to come on down, come join me up front. <coughs> All right, we're oh. We got to squeeze in today. All right, my friends, if any other kids want to come down, you're welcome to at any point here. Uh, here is my question today. Over these last few weeks before Easter, we've been talking about joy in church. And so here's my question. What brings you joy? Mm. We got answers today. I swear if you say chicken. Don't you, don't you do it. All right, stand up. All right, hold on. All right, who else has got an answer? All right, you got to stand up, though. <laughs> Brian, you got a chance to do this a few weeks ago, all right? All right, what brings you joy, Mr. Landon? My mom. Oh, it's not even Mother's Day. Look at you. Listening to 21 Pilots well with my mom. What's that? Listening to 21 Pilots with my mom. 21 Pilots, yeah, I love it. I didn't know you liked them, Tanya. All right. Who else? Stand up. Got to stand up. So look at the camera, too, so people that are live streaming with us can hear you and see you. Foxies. Foxes? Yeah. Nice. All right. What else? I'll give you the mic, but you got to stand up and look up there. Arabella's birthday. Birthdays? Yeah. Is it really? Happy birthday, Arabella. Oh, well, <laughs> that's what sisters will do sometime, and brothers sometimes, right? Mr. Gabe, you got one? Chicken. Oh, I knew that was coming up. I don't know. It's a thing they got. All right. Well, on Easter, everybody seems at church at least. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm getting old. All right. At church, at least on Easter, everybody seems a little bit more happy and joyful, don't we? Why do you think that is? Ooh, love that, yeah. All right, Mr. Gabe, why? Because we have the Easter egg hunt today. Well, you all might be happy about that. Your parents later in the day, I don't know. We'll see. But why do we come to church on Easter? What brings us joy? on Easter Sunday for all of us. Yes, you know the answer, right? Because Jesus died and God brought him back to life. Simple as that. I don't know if it's that simple, but but that makes us very happy, huh? All right. All right, so today we have some other things to bring you happy and celebration. Easter egg hunt, we mentioned that. If we have middle schoolers or high schoolers sitting out there, uh, and they want to help hide eggs. We have 400 eggs to put out today. So you guys, you can thank all of these adults that brought in a lot of candy for you. Uh, so middle schoolers and high schoolers, you can go with Jesse afterwards and help hide those around. And then after the service is over, we'll do an Easter egg hunt. Does that sound good? And... You think the baskets are going to be too small? Yeah. They might be, yeah. <laughs> and adults are welcome to stay around for a couple things that could bring us some joy. Uh, some snacks, some quiche, some mimosas, more coffee, all of that. So we're going to have a big celebration today. Can I say a prayer for you before you go back? Yeah. Okay. Go back for class with Mrs. Hibbs and then Easter egg hunt when church is over. Sound good? All right, let me say a prayer. Loving God, thank you for Easter. Thank you for coming back to life and for living and walking with us. Thanks for all the fun and the big celebration we get to have today because of that. In your name we pray, amen.
Good morning, church. I am Jennifer Brill Young, the pastor of diversity and inclusion here at Harmony Springs Christian Church. And today we are here to celebrate Easter, but also we'd like to recognize the Transgender Day of Visibility. You may remember our time together during service around November 20th to remember our transgender siblings who have been murdered as a result of transphobia. Transgender Day of Remembrance was started in 1999 to bring attention to continued and pervasive violence directed toward transgender people. Today, March 31st, is the Transgender Day of Visibility when we recognize and celebrate members of the transgender and gender non-conforming communities. This was first celebrated in 2009 and was officially recognized by President Joe Biden in 2021. Biden was the first American president to issue a formal statement recognizing this event, and he has done so every year since, including this year, you may have already heard. How fitting is it then that this year, March 31st, also happens to be Easter Sunday? I think we can all agree that LGBTQ people need their resurrection moment where death and hate do not shadow the love that transcends both. Jesus' death stemmed from expectational difference and fear led by the political powers of the day. In Christ's resurrection, queer folks find hope transcending injustice and hate. LGBTQ siblings of faith see promise in the resurrection story that God in the person of Jesus knows what it is to be crucified from injustice, to be misunderstood, to be maligned, Jesus knows the ache to be denied the right to be human and in relationship. But in the resurrection, where Jesus defied death itself, our trans siblings can resurrect with hope on earth, no longer emotionally and spiritually dead in the tomb, in fear of being bullied, no longer forced to wear clothing that isn't who they are, no longer hiding pronouns or names chosen to bring into light their full personhood. Transgender and non-binary individuals are beloved by God and carry the very imago dei, the image of God, God who created all of us in their likeness. Today's Transgender Day of Visibility is an invitation and a reminder for all that when God comes at us in love, God means every single one of us. Let us pray. Dear God of all genders and artistic creativity, we thank you for the first day of creation with day and night, but also for the beauty of sunsets and sunrises. We thank you for day two sky and water, but also for the wet fog and the rain found when the sky releases the very water that nourishes us and grows all living things. We thank you for day three when you created dry land and gathered water, but also for marshes and swamps in which we find both land and water at once. Dear God, we are amazed at the celestial bodies of the sun and moon, while we also give you thanks for other planets, asteroids, black holes, and all that is yet to be discovered. We thank you for the animals of the sea and the air, but also penguins and ducks, who have their own combination of walking, flying, and swimming. We are so grateful for your artistry in male and female creation that also includes siblings who are transgender, intersex, non-binary, and all the rest of the LGBTQ rainbow. To our transgender and non-binary siblings, forgive us for the times we didn't see you, for the times we failed to love you, with permission and God's help, we will love you more faithfully. We see you and our hearts burn. Amen. Thank you, Gen Pastor Jennifer. And uh, we do lift up uh, Transgender Day of Remembrance. And because this day is a celebration, I just applaud you, Jennifer, what, for what you brought to us today, Pastor, and uh, let's give a hand. Yes. And thank God we're in a church that we can say so, right? That 
we can say so and we affirm every individual. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you that we are in a church where we serve a risen Savior. We thank you for Easter and all that means and transformation. Transform hearts, Lord. Give us transformation and generations to come and even now as we do pray peace on earth and peace in every soul. We ask you, God, as Jennifer raised up, the transgender community, the LGBTQ community, the rainbows on earth, that you, Lord, are the living rainbow. You are the living God that we serve. And even as moments ago we sang, we serve a risen Savior. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart, oh gracious and good God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for forgiveness, for hope and the help to do it again and to do it better on this earth. As we ask you to help us to be loving and kind, as we ask for violence to end, as we ask for every person, as Pastor Jennifer said, the Imago Deo within us all, as we greet one another, Lord, help us to greet one another, our families, our friends, our neighbors, as we pray for those for whom we love and for those who feel unlovable. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer as we celebrate resurrection with the words you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As our choir makes sing. I was thinking, most of you probably know most of the people who are singing in the choir, or who you see sometimes singing on the screen in the virtual choir. Most of you probably know most of them. If you don't, I hope you'll make a mental note of who they are and maybe, you know, stop them occasionally and say, gosh, I really appreciate how beautifully you you sang on Sunday um, because they really go out of their way and they're really good musicians. They're really good singers and it's just a joy to work with them. I mean it. When I was a child, I thought as a child and I spoke as a child. Yes, that's correct. And I remember when I went to church, there was, I grew up in a church, there was a great music program, and I remember as a very young child, I told my mother uh, at one time, I love, the, uh, I love the show. The commercials are a little bit too long. <laughs> I was a musician as a child, so I just thought the whole thing should be music. Anyway, I, I, I spoke as a child. Now I'm a man.
Well, good morning again, and happy and blessed Easter to all of you. Thanks for taking time in your Easter schedule today to be here with us at Harmony Springs and to celebrate together. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. I decided this morning at the last minute to add one more thing to our Sunday morning schedule, and that is an adult Easter egg hunt. And that's where we all go out and hide the eggs and then come back in uh, knowing that then we will have forgotten where we just hid all the eggs outside. <laughs> all right. No, uh, but I am glad that fog is starting to lift and uh, our kids will be able to see the Easter eggs that they are hunting. Although hunting in fog could be fun. I don't know. Years ago, I read uh, a question uh, and a piece of advice towards pastors preaching on Easter. And I've tried to keep it in the back of my mind every year. I can't believe how many years we've been in this position together. I was just thinking to myself how our kids have grown and gotten to know each other and uh, how great that is and how many Easter eggs we've hid after service. If you've journeyed with us for a while, you maybe remember a couple of Easter's where it was raining outside and we were meeting at Akron General's Health and Wellness Center and the only place we could hide eggs was in the room where we were. So uh, we just hid all the Easter eggs under all the chairs, I think. So uh, this year is a step up from that where we can actually go outside and hide some eggs. But that piece of advice uh, that I read not too long ago that it stuck with me was simply this. Uh, the article said this, even if you don't attend church on a regular basis, even if uh, you only come to church on Easter, most people know the Easter story. So for a pastor, the job is not necessarily to retell the Easter story, because even if we've never been in a church to begin with, we probably know what the Easter story is about. Of course, as simply as boiled down as I said it to the kids, it is just as simple for us. Christ died and God brought him back to life. And so today we are here to celebrate that. But this piece of advice simply said this, uh, retelling the story is important, but the bigger thing in an audience of people gathered to hear that story again is to attempt to answer this question, why? Why does the Easter story matter? Why does it matter to me? Why should it matter to the church? Why does it matter to you? Maybe that's the simple question you can take from this Easter gathering this morning uh, home with you to answer on your own. Why does it matter? Every year I think I've tried to, based on the things happening in the world and my own life, tried to answer that question uh, at any given time, depending on what was going on uh, over, these, over this last decade or so that I've been here standing in front of you on Easter Sundays. Today, of course, is no different. And we've been journeying through these weeks of Lent that are the Sundays leading up to Easter, uh, talking about this concept of joy, extreme and deep happiness that we would say in the church only comes from the source of all life, the one who has the power and authority to even bring Jesus the Christ back from death. That kind of joy. And we've been talking about it from different angles. Uh, what do we do when joy seems to have disappeared from our life? Uh, joy can ebb and flow. It has ups and downs. But there are moments in time in our lives where joy can be, like it is today and on Easter Sundays in churches throughout the world, joy can be glorious. What does joy, glorious joy, mean for you? Maybe that's another question to tack on to why does Easter matter to you? What does glorious joy look like for you? As we've been talking about the seed of joy, we've been talking about how uh, even in these winter months and into spring, we can plant seeds of joy in our own lives, in the world, uh, and trust and know that God will see that joy into fruition. 
that uh, like a bulb in the ground, flowers can bloom and that God has the capacity and the ability to be able to make that kind of joy and love grow in our lives. So today we bring that whole joy discussion uh, to a bit of a close together here. Years ago on uh, a radio interview on NPR, a, uh, the radio interviewer was interviewing Alexander Gom, G-A-M-M-E, a professional adventurer who makes a living doing things like biking the Sahara and climbing the Everest. He made a particular video one day on a track that he made, was making into uh, the frozen tundra of the Antarctic. On his journey, a uh, multiple month journey, as he journeyed, he buried things in the ground. Supplies, the things he would need, uh, but didn't necessarily want to have to carry throughout his entire journey. Uh, and as he made his way back on this journey, on this trek, he would stop at each point where he had previously buried items in the ground and dig them up. And maybe like the adult Easter egg hunt, or like the adult Easter egg hunt, by the time he got back to those uh, items that he had buried in the ice, uh, he had forgotten what he had actually buried there to begin with. In this interview and in a YouTube video that became very popular, uh, he is almost at the end of his journey and is digging up a cache of items that he had buried early on. And he gets the camera out uh, to be able to document what he was unearthing. Uh, and in this video, he's digging out and unearthing these items he had buried. And he can't remember what he had put in the ground. Because whatever it was, he had buried it three months ago. I have trouble remembering what I did yesterday. I certainly would have been able to remember either. And in the video in Norwegian, he says, uh, I'm quite hungry. As he burrows into the snow, I hope it's something good. He finds the plastic bags and dives into them, muttering as he pulls out item after item. First, uh, Vaseline, <laughs> zinc ointment, right? All important things that he probably needed, but he was really looking for something to eat, I think. He had spent those three months eating as healthy as he could. And in those moments, was pretty, you can tell in the video, was pretty hungry and starving. And then in Norwegian, uh, all of a sudden, as he's pulling those items out, Vaseline, zinc, zinc ointment, in Norwegian, he screams, Ja! Screaming in joy, an exuberant Norwegian, yes. Over and over, he screams, ja, ja. His voice flying out across the frozen desert. He holds up a double pack of cheese doodles. <laughs> he flings it up in the air and films it coming down. He screams again and then freezes. Is it real? He yells out. He says as he starts to dig again, and ja! He's found a huge chocolate bar next. <laughs> then it's just one thing after another. Food, food, food. After three months of hunger, you can imagine how joyful and excited and happy he was. He shouts and giggles, and then breaks into the hallelujah chorus from Handel's Messiah <laughs> as he uncovers it all, lost in the moment of unbridled joy. In this Radio Lab interview with Alexander, he says, the interviewer says this, uh, I can't remember the last time I experienced such unbridled joy like we got a chance to witness you experiencing when you dug up those food items. 
And so here's my third question for you, I guess, uh, this morning. In addition to why does Easter matter to you, simply this. When was the last time you experienced unbridled joy like that? When was the last time something wonderfully joyful happened under your nose and you couldn't even see it or know it was there? My friends, I was thinking this morning as we were going through the, this Easter service together, uh, I was thinking how amazing and unique and fragile a church like ours, Harmony Springs, is in our gathering, not just on this Easter Sunday, but every single Sunday. To be able to be a place where people can be fully authentic and fully themselves and not have to bury anything about themselves in the ground is a gift that we can give the world. I was thinking about all the times as your pastor here at Harmony Springs that in one way or another, I have been able to be the embrace or the loving arms of a church that welcomes people who have had to, unfortunately, not be themselves, or who expected the church to be kinder and more gentler and more loving than the church turned out to be. We have become a place where people can land on Easter and every other Sunday. If you have, and I know you have because I've been in these conversations with you, uh, if you have experienced church that is more hurtful, that it is loving, if you've experienced a church that is more broken than a resurrected Jesus might lead us to be. If you've experienced judgment using the same Bible that is filled with scriptures where God is the embodiment of love, then my friends, uh, today I want to encourage you and to acknowledge and celebrate the fact that all of that here at Harmony Springs has been put to death. My friends, as I look back on our own history at church, I think that ours is a resurrection story. Can a church that had a bigger building and more maintenance, uh, the cost of more maintenance than one congregation could handle, can a church that was in that position live again? My friends, the answer is yes, it can. Can a church where people were Uh, living in a toxic church culture and at each other's throats on a regular basis, live and breathe again in a new embodiment of life and love in this world, Harmony Springs, yes, it can. Why? Why does it matter? Why does the resurrection matter? Because Christ, I think, that's my answer today, it may change tomorrow, because Christ, through the power of God, has the ability to create resurrection in us. My friends, in our humanity, we can be the kind of people living in a building that is crumbling around us, and yet God looks at us even in death and says, even when things are at their worst, when things are dying, new life can spring forth from the ground. The seed of joy never dies, for God is in charge. And God can make things happen that we never thought were possible. In a great hymn of the church, simply I will end my Easter sermon for you this day with these words. Hell took a body and discovered God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. O death, where is thy sting? Oh, hell, where is thy victory? My friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen? Amen.
time Now the storm is rolled away He is risen from the grave We are Easter people now Turning power upside down In the valley of the shadow We're the candle in the window Saying hope will rise again Everybody hear the story all together, true forever There's nowhere love can reach So let the walls be broken down Revolution all around We are Easter people now Turning power upside down With a candle in the window Saying hope will rise again And can you feel it rising now Springing up from the frozen ground And can you hear the echo sound We are Easter people now, turning power upside down. Easter people now, turning power upside down. We are the shadow with the in the broken pieces even in our unbelief believing saying hope will rise hope will rise hope will rise And that was beautiful, wasn't it? And your sermon. Thank you so much. As we continue to travel in hope, rising again, um, I love Easter. I know you do too. And the resurrection hope. Uh, I had a favorite Easter. I don't know if you have a favorite one. Every Easter is fantastic. But I had a favorite one uh, at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, it was 2 a.m. And sadly, I was called to the bedside of a woman that also had three children. Uh, 35 years old, waiting for a heart transplant, and they were losing her. But it was Easter morning, and the celebration came when at 5 a.m. they received a heart for her. And it was a grand celebration. And I love the song that we sang moments ago, You Ask Me How I Know He Lives, He Lives Within My Heart. And I heard a preacher this morning early say, If you're looking up, you may be looking too far off. He's right here. Amen. We believe in the risen Lord, and in that, we remember his words as he had given thanks. He gave his body and broke the bread and said, this is my body given for you. This he said, do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after dinner, Christ took a cup and poured it out for his disciples, reminded them, as Christ does us, that this cup is the establishment of a new covenant for the forgiveness of sins for all people. These, my friends, are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Here we are, Father God, at the table of our risen Lord. You have made it possible for whomever we are where each of us has been, wherever we have been, to be fully welcome to this holy feast. You are here and invite us to join in what you have prepared by the sacrifice of your son. 
He overcame the power of death and made it possible for all of us. We cannot know or imagine how our lives would be without the agony of Jesus' death and his miraculous resurrection. You have given us life now and the life that lies ahead in your eternal realm. We should be shouting, thank you, God, for the man on the middle cross. How can we not joyously, thankfully, and humbly meet you at this table? Thank you for this table. Loving creator and recreator, help us see the risen Christ at work in our world. Jesus has shown us how to be servants. Please guide us to serve others along our earthly journey. There is still more for us to do. Certainly you allow us more than enough mercy and forgiveness to overcome any and all fears or failures. Keep us faithful in our efforts to honor you, we ask in your son's precious name. My friends, this Easter table is set and all are welcome. We invite you to come forward and to receive. Would you come? Let us pray. 
amen. I was just looking at the clock at Easter service in under an hour. How about that? <laughs> Preacher didn't preach for too long today, I guess. Well, my friends, uh, as we bring this part of our gathering this morning to a close, I want to invite you to stay, get another cup of coffee, visit, uh, and, of course, drink a mimosa and hold up uh, a glass for the risen Savior today. Uh, and if you have kids, we'll meet up over here uh, for the Easter egg hunt and all that great candy. There are some Easter flowers behind me. If you would like to take one home with you today, you're more than welcome. Uh, we would love for them all to go to you instead of us having to find a home for them later. So please help yourselves. We would love that. Would you all stand as we bring things to a close and join me in reciting this benediction from the book of Numbers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here. Happy Easter, everyone.